Good morning. Welcome to worship at First English Lutheran Church this morning in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. We're commemorating a couple special days today. The first is All Saints Day, the day that we remember those who have gone on to be with Jesus. And we'll be having a special commemoration of those from our number who have gone this year. We also are having overtones of the Reformation today. We'll actually be celebrating the Reformation on November 22nd. That's the day we're going to confirm our confirmands. But um, for today, we just couldn't quite pass it up. So you'll hear some of that throughout the service. Today we have present Dave Miller on the keyboard and singing, Eric and Tanya Wangan singing, Horace Davis singing, Sue Davies and Dave Davies singing, and Sue is reading. Kevin Krieger is in the sound booth, and I'm Pastor Cheryl, the pastor here at this church, and we would just love to welcome you. Thank you for stopping by if you've never been here before. If you're a regular worshiper, we're grateful that you keep coming back, and we're glad to be able to worship with you today. On Friday, one of our beloved members, Mary Lou Wangan, went to be with Jesus. We were, the family was surprised at its unexpectedness, and today we are grieving her loss and also rejoicing that she's with the Lord. You'll hear more about the details to come. Just watch your email, and we'll let you know. Thank you. Now let's just quiet our hearts and prepare ourselves for worship this morning with a few moments of silence. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's with joy and relief that we enter into your presence, knowing that you welcome us, that you love us, that you provide home for us in times when we feel very disoriented and unanchored. You are our orientation. You are our anchor, our safe place. And this morning, you extend that to all of us, no matter what kind of week we've had. We know that you understand, and you love us, and you are with us. Please send your spirit to our hearts this morning and our spirits to open us to all you would show us of how much love and generosity you show toward us today and every day. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess because that we are not, not awake for you. you. We are not, not faithful in using your, your gifts. gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. 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 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let's rejoice in our forgiveness and salvation. Now the feast and celebration. Sings for 
joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory Riches, wisdom, and might, and honor, and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory as people of God to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 6a. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. 
Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. It's time for the children's sermon. Are you ready, Faith? Oh, Faith is wondering what all the candles are in front of me. I don't know if you can see them on your screen, but we have many tall candles here today. But yeah, what are they for? Well, each one of these candles reminds us of someone that we know from our church who has died this year. I know it's really sad. We miss them so much. So, but are they with Jesus now? They, they really are with Jesus. What's that like? Well, I'm not sure because I'm still here, but I have a hint. It's, it's sort of like this. When I was younger and used to take my little kids to visit my mom and dad, they lived in a great big house. Yeah, it was really that big. They used to have retreats for church groups to come, even up to 60 people. Yeah, there were a lot of bunk beds up there. And my mom would do all the cooking, and she loved to have people at her house. But when I came with my children, so those were her grandchildren, when I came with them, my mom would be waiting for me. She would be watching out the window. And the minute my car came in the driveway, she would be out on the front porch. And she would have a big smile on her face and so much love in her eyes. <laughs> yeah, really. So much love in her eyes that I could see it all the way from the car. Yeah, it was a lot of love. And she was always wiping her hands on a dish towel. And she would come out to the car, and she would, as the kids got out of the car, she would hug every single one of them. And she would tick their faces like that and kiss them. Your grandma does that too? Yeah, grandmas do stuff like that. And then she would give me a big hug and say, I'm so glad you're here. And then we would walk in the house, and guess what? I knew that I was home. That this was a place where I was safe and I could eat good food and be loved and I would want to stay there a very, very long time. She said, do you think that's a little bit what it likes, feels like to get to heaven? I think that's a tiny bit of what it feels like to get to heaven. Yeah, just a tiny bit. Because anything good on this earth is just a tiny, tiny little bit of how much God has ready for us when we get to his house. No, we don't need to be afraid of death. We miss the people who go there, but we can be sure that they're very safe and in a place full of light and joy. It does feel good to know that. Let's all remember that today as we also remember the sadness we feel. Jesus did overcome death, and there's a lot of brightness and love when we move into our next life. Should we thank Jesus? Dear Jesus, thank you that you have prepared a place for us in your home 
where we can truly be home in every sense of the word. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week. Before I begin my sermon, I would just like to point out what you see on your screen right now. This building faith, bringing hope, and um, sharing God's love with children, adults, and families in our community. That is the rest of the theme that we are um, just embracing as we are in the middle of what we call a stewardship campaign. But don't let that scare you. It's a good thing. And we'll be talking about that some more. But I just wanted you to, to get a little grasp of what we're moving forward from, from those roots that build on our mission statement. Our sermon today is from both Genesis and Colossians. And um, I would like to just share a few thoughts with you, and then we have after that a video for you to watch, a couple of them actually, that um, share what First English means to some of our members and those who are catching virtual Sunday school every week with their children. Joseph. Joseph, I've, I've just always been amazed by him, and, and not always for the good either. He was, uh, from the very start, a person who felt God's call on his life, but he didn't really know what it was. He didn't know how to communicate it. He just knew he was a favorite child, and he was a braggart. And then, as a young man, he was sold by his older brothers because of his bragging. They were sick of it. And they sold him to some merchants who were traveling through their grazing land for their sheep. Now the merchants took a look at Joseph and knew they could get a good price for him as a slave. And they did. Presumably because he was young and he was strong and he was handsome and he appeared to be a good investment. Wow. Wow. A good investment. So he ended up far from home in Egypt, and he was purchased by Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard. Now, it's hard for a favorite son and a braggart to become a slave. If ever there was a good reason for someone to be resentful and do a halfway job, it was Joseph. Why well, work hard when nothing belongs to me, he could have asked. Why care about managing well when I have nothing of my own to manage? I'll do what I have to do, but I'm not going to do any more. He could have said that, but that's not what happened. And the only explanation we're give, we are given is that the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. The Lord was with Joseph so he prospered. Well, that must be why he was able to think clearly and rise above a very difficult situation and do his best to manage someone else's property with great wisdom. 
Last week, we talked about how love, when we're, we know we're loved, and when we love, we just naturally want to give. It's just part of loving. So I thought about Joseph, and I thought he's giving and giving and giving in this job. What's that about? Where is the love coming from? He's a slave. And then I read it again. The Lord was with him. And he felt God's presence with him and his love for him. And outflowed gratitude, even in a foreign country. So Joseph gives his best to the point where Potiphar recognizes that there's something very remarkable going on here. Even Potiphar, not a believer in the God of Israel, but he recognizes that the Lord, the God of Israel, is with Joseph and that the Lord is giving Joseph success in everything he does. That's amazing. So he puts Joseph in charge of everything, everything in his household. And he just forgets about it and doesn't have to worry because he knows that Joseph is fine and trustworthy and honest. He's a good manager. Or we could put it this way, too. Joseph's trustworthiness brought glory to God. Joseph's behavior made God look good to people who didn't believe in God. Joseph's faithful management, his faithful stewardship proved God was good. And in the end, Joseph saved entire nations from starvation. I don't know if you caught that, but I was interchanging two words. I was interchanging management and stewardship. Stewardship isn't just that time of year when the church gets on your case about giving more money. That's what we think of when we hear the word stewardship. But stewardship is actually management. How we choose to manage what God's given us to manage. And God has given us many things, right, to manage. He's given us this beautiful world around us and our bodies and our minds and our families and our possessions and our jobs and our finances, our, our spirits and our hearts. In fact, God has given us everything we have and everything we are. Richly, it says in Scripture, he's given us all of this to enjoy. But never, never so we can grasp it tightly and shut God out and never so we can kind of push God into the background and say, hey, God, if I have anything left over when I'm done doing whatever I want to do, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it your way. It's never like that when we truly acknowledge God is with us and in us and living through us and has given us everything in the first place. As we open up our lives to God, our, our, the Spirit guides us to manage so that the ways we live our lives and spend our money and raise our families and work at our jobs, all of those things reflect love and express gratitude, and our, our lives reveal to those around us that the Lord is with us, that the Lord is the one who makes us successful. Let's call this the kingdom of God paradigm shift, away from it's all mine and I'll give a little if I want to, it's all God's, and I get to be part of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is so wonderful. It's filled with joy and love and generosity and hospitality and peace and abundance and always enough. All of these things fall into place when we let God's love 
flow into us and our gratitude flow out of us. When an entire congregation is functioning and living together that way, it just draws other people to Jesus because they see the Lord is with them, just as Potiphar saw it about Joseph. Today, we have a first-hand account from a, a relatively new member of our congregation, from Sherry, who was drawn to our congregation and joined just a few years ago with her daughter, Peyton. Sherry agreed to do this little tiny interview with me to share her story, which I find <laughs> remarkable. Let's listen. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Cheryl Davis, the pastor here at First English, and I wanted to just tap into Sherry Kopchick's story about how she came to be part of our congregation, what really mattered to her when she decided to to be part of this church. So she has a great story, and I'm just going to kind of ask her some questions and, and um, we can hear it together. You were just telling me how your first experience with the church came because someone from this church invited you. Yes, yes. Uh, I was very lucky to meet Emily. Um, we worked together at the school um, doing the PTC stuff together. She signed up for a book fair, and we spent the whole afternoon chit-chatting and getting to know each other, and she kept going on and on about this great church she goes to and what it means to her family to go to that church and how they'd never been to church before they met the pastor there and that they had got invited to go and how it had become such a large part of, of their life, and I was intrigued by that um, because that wasn't the experience I had had growing up, and, um, and, I, and at that point in my life, I was kind of open to finding um, a new means of spiritual guidance. It had been a while since I'd been really comfortable at church and, and with, with a, a congregation. And Emily told me that they were going to have an Easter egg hunt and said, you know, I think that'd be great if you want to take Peyton and see what it's all about and we'd love to have you. So I thought it sounded fun and, and we went and it was amazing. And um, we met all kinds of wonderful people and then you yourself introduced yourself to me, which I was impressed with because I can't remember ever being approached at a church by anyone, either during the service, after the service, during an, anything you were doing there. Um, and to be, to, to be asked, you know, why I, why I was there and noticed that we were there and we were new and, and talked to, just to be recognized was really, it was really important, you know, that, wow, Somebody cares that we're here. This is cool, you know. Yeah, we did care, and then I, I, when we were talking before, we talked about how Emily played that role, mm -hmm. and then the people who were here played a role. They did. And then you had certain things you were looking for. Yes. You mentioned um, connections and giving children a chance to serve, and I, I think what you say about that is just so good. I'd like you to share a little of that with us. Sure, sure. I, I felt like there were some things missing at that point in my life, um, and for me and for Peyton. Um, we have a very small family, um, and not a whole lot of, I mean, our, our family's close, but it's, it's relatively small and people are busy. Um, and also, uh, I feel like there's a lack of children getting experience and um, exposure to serving and being a part of community and what that means and how that can make them feel good and want to pursue that as they grow. So I thought, a, you know, finding a good church is a, is a great way to set that example for her. Um, you know, it's one thing to tell your kid, it's really good to go and work at a soup kitchen or it's really helpful to go help your neighbor rake leaves. But Coming from mom, it's not quite the same as other kids doing it and seeing that they're enjoying it and having fun and it can be cool. And um, that's kind of what I wanted for her was that experience of having other people, you know, show her and, and set that example for her and, you know, get to build relationships with other people that way. And you had mentioned um, how much it meant for you to have Peyton in Sunday school. And I, I loved how you described that. Um, in terms of the social aspects of learning together and all, all 
Would you talk about that some more? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think one of, one of the greatest things about, you know, Peyton going to Sunday school is getting to sit with other kids her age and learn about God together and really kind of steep in, you know, what it means to, you know, think about hope and think about belief and think about spirit and all those kind of really abstract big ideas that, I mean, everyone struggles with, not just kids, but adults. I mean, these are big ideas. Um, and I, I like that, you know, once a week, she's able to sit with, with friends and do a craft and do some games and sing some songs. And the whole time, it's all about learning to follow Jesus and what Jesus is about and, and why this can be important in her life. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, a really, it's a really great part of our week. That's just so good to hear that because it's easy to take those experiences for granted if, if you always grew up with them and you have very intentionally chosen certain things so that your daughter will grow up with them. I also liked what you talked about, about a while ago about creating almost a larger family around your smaller family. Yes. Can you fill us in a little about that? Sure. Um, so, I mean, in broader terms, um, things happen and nothing's really, you know, guaranteed in life. And if, if your family isn't there for you or isn't able to be there for you, what happens when things go wrong? You know, who, who do you turn to for support or who do you, where do you go for solace, for, for a sense of, you know, someone cares and someone's there for you. And I think about that because of course, like I said, we do have a small family and I wanted Peyton to know that it's okay to seek out and build relationships with, with other people so that you have a good network to go to and you're able to share experiences together and build relationships that way. Because I mean, you know, the more people you have, the better your life can be. Yeah. And this is a church where people really are connected yeah. and do care about relationships and the older folks really do care about the younger folks. So yeah. you had said something about you drew drove by this church how many times? Oh yeah, because it's right by the library, you know? Yeah. We love the library. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I can't, I'm five, six, seven years ago, I mean, I knew nothing about this church and we drive by it and it's, it's a cute little church. It's a pretty little church, but I mean, I never would have guessed that it would be such a big part of my life and that so many people that are so important to me come here and congregate here and live and grow and learn here and I mean it's it's I've lived in Rapids forever you know so it, it's kind of mind-blowing to me that the way things kind of fit together these pieces of the puzzle for me and um and how important it has become in my life and in Peyton's life so we feel very blessed and very grateful well we're blessed to have you and I, I this has been a great introduction um, to you, uh, to introduce you to many folks in our congregation, but also to um, just feel that your contribution to us is just as much a blessing to us as it is to you. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank for you. This opportunity. We are very grateful. Thank you. We are too. <laughs> So as, as we were rejoicing and being grateful together, um, I just loved how Sherry pointed out the importance of faith development to children and the larger church family, and noticed how she was so, so in step with our Christian ed team that brainstormed this last summer, and as they were trying to meet the needs of our own kids, um, during the pandemic, decided that we were also being called to meet spiritual needs of families in our area, families we'd never met. Now, if we fast forward to today, we've got about eight weeks into virtual Sunday school and have already received a lot of positive feedback. And I would like to share one more quick video with you that Tanya Manning made on her telephone for us with her sons to share what virtual Sunday school means to them as a family. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm here with my three-year-old son, Kipton, and my six-year-old son, Silas. Hi! Silas, what do you like, what do you ask me to do almost every day of the week? Mm, do Sunday school. And why is it so much fun for you? 
um, doing crafts. The crafts are pretty cool. And what do you learn about? These desks. Yeah. In this crazy world of COVID, it has been wonderful to have Sunday school virtually as a resource for my kids to learn about Jesus and just something fun for them to look forward to every week. Thank you so much. We've only just begun to spread the gospel of Jesus through this means, and who knows what lies ahead? Only the Lord knows, and we're just keeping our eyes and ears tuned to the Holy Spirit to follow and know what comes next. The stewardship team and the church council has selected this as one of their mission initiatives for this year, and you received a mailer on Friday that explains it more completely. It's really exciting to think that if each of us gives a little bit more than we're already giving, we will easily cover the cost of this ministry, which we estimate to be about $7,000. It's our way of managing well the resources God has given us, the new sound and recording system, our compensated tech person who is producing these, our volunteers who have a passion for it, and our families who are really appreciating the tools we're giving them to grow in faith with their children. We're so fortunate that God has equipped us for what he's called us to do and has enlist enlisted our management skills to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's going to be so much fun to be Joseph's together with the Lord as we share together in God's work. Amen. Let's sing, let all things now living, let's just praise God for all he's given us. Children of God, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifice as witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage as you reveal to us how to spread your gospel. Especially we ask for your blessing on the virtual Sunday school. Give the volunteers and Mark, our producer, creati creativity and courage. Show us how to get the word out to our community. Enable parents to use the recordings to build their own faith and their children's faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts to be eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Give us the grace to trust you with the results of the election. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. As we recognize how much you have given us, open our hearts to give back to you with great love and joy. Give us faith to trust you in our giving, knowing that you are with us and teach us to manage your blessings with wisdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of all healing power, we pray especially today for those who are very ill or recovering from serious illnesses, especially Trish Michaud, Tim Richardson, Sarah Sims, Jenny Braun, Sally Goss, Kay McKenzie, and Carol Schneeberg's granddaughter-in-law, Kendra, and her daughter, Sarah. Give their bodies strength to heal. Help them to know your precious Holy Spirit is with them. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort today the family of Mary Lou Wangan as they grieve her unexpected passing on Friday. Give them wisdom and strength, peace and your presence as they face the days ahead. We pray too for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Give them faith to believe they are with you. In faith may we join them someday in ceaseless praise and endless love. Hear us, O oh God. Your the mercy, mercy is, great. is great. Father, we know you have already received our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and you are already answering them. We wait with eagerness for the day when you gather all creation around your throne and where you will reign with truth, justice, and peace forever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Share the peace of the Lord with one another. We're sharing it with you. For the offering today, I asked Eric and Tanya to sing a song that you'll recognize being familiar from Holden's Evening Prayer, which we usually use during Lent on the Wednesday evening services. If you look in the front part of the hymnal, uh, you'll actually notice there's a whole section of what's called service music. It's numbered with the hymns, and so this is actually number 232. And even though it's part of the Holden Evening Prayer, it's a wonderful song about giving ourselves as an offering to our Lord.
call to you. Oh come God, to me I call now. to you. Oh hear come to me now. Voice when oh I cry to my voice you. when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise Let up. My prayer rise like God of all, God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made, through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. This morning we will be, um, there will be a picture on the screen of those who have gone to be with the Lord this year. We will light a candle as we remember them and the bell will toll. Mary Kronberger, January 20th. June Swanson, February 9th. Earl Pash, March 8th. James Kostasak, March 9th. Ramona Dorn, March 10th. Norman Pearson, April 25th. Russell Coleman, May 5th. Helen Samerlot, May 31st. Lyle Zerflu, June 20th. Ronald Klebs, July 23rd. Phyllis Lewis, August 8th. Ida Ann Miller, September 10th. Lois Mansavage, September 11th. Forest Frawl, September 12th. Christine Ellingson Mullen, September 18th. Mary Lou Wangan, October 30th.
our Lord and our God, we thank you for each of these people whose lives these candles represent, for the love and the richness and the joy they have brought to us over the years. And we thank you that you have called their names and brought them home. We ask for your peace, your comfort, and your strength as we live daily without them, but with the hope that we will see them again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare to share in the feast that um, those in heaven also partake of. We are one in the Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to, to give our, our thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all those who love, we love who we know are with you and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took the bread gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you as often as you do this remember me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember me. Let us pray. God of new life, pour, pour out, out your, your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit on us and on, and on these, these gifts of bread and wine. wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us out alive with justice, peace, hope, and love. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let's pray in the words Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
you are invited to participate in the Lord's Supper. If you have bread and wine or grape juice there with you, that is fine to use. If you know Jesus is your Savior, you are welcome at this table. Come, taste. The Lord is so good. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet for us. Sustain us on the journey and strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, may he give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, the Sovereign, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. As we leave today, our service that has contained many parts, but we pray it's been a blessing to you. Let's remind ourselves as we go into this week of an election that God is our mighty fortress. Let's sing together.
Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve one another and the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed week.